Hello guys, and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're talking about five ways to improve your communication with your partner. Before we continue our video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more interesting videos. I'm sure you've heard this saying before. Communication is the key to any relationship. It sounds cliche, but it's true. I think it's really easy to tell people communication is important in a relationship, but it's certainly not easy to explain how to communicate. And if we're never taught how to use this key, then we'll never be able to open the door to healthy communication. Communication has been defined as a lot of things, but my favorite definition includes the following. It's the successful conveying of sharing of ideas and feelings. I always say I'm a great talker, but I also have to be a great listener in order for communication to be healthy and effective. Communication is about expressing yourself in a healthy way. Listening to your partner when they are doing the same and really hearing and absorbing what the other person has to say is vital. Let's get into it. Let's review the five ways to improve your communication with your partner. Number one, listen to understand and not to reply. Listening to reply is the standard way that most people communicate and it leads to more argument. What that means is that instead of really paying attention to what the other person is saying, you're already thinking about what you want to say in response. Of course, it's great to have a well thought out reply, but if you're thinking about what you want to say instead of hearing what the other person is saying, then you're not really listening and you're not communicating. You may be able to get your point across, or not, if the other person listens the same way you do, but you're not having a meaningful interaction with your partner. So what does listening to understand look like? Well, first off, pay attention. When someone's talking to you, look at them. Notice their eye contact and their body language. Take in their tone of voice as well as what they're actually saying. Really listen. Listen with your body. Turn towards the person who's talking. Lean in. Make them feel listened to because you're really listening. Make eye contact. Smile. Nod. And make leading noises like aha uh -huh, and really and go on when it's appropriate to do so. The biggest thing is do not interrupt. The best way to make someone feel like they're not being heard is to interrupt or talk over them. Listen fully and wait until they're done to ask questions or add your thoughts. One thing you can do is repeat what they said. Don't just say what you were planning to say. Show that you've heard what they've said by repeating it back to them or a summary of what you've heard before adding your own opinions. Respond to what they said. Be honest and respectful in your responses and remember to talk and listen in the ways that you would want to be talked and listened to. Number two, control your emotions. Take a break if you need to. In relationships, the term taking a break is a phrase used to describe what is typically meant to be a temporary hiatus from what you're doing. If during a discussion or argument, things get a little too heated, have a safe word that indicates to your partner that you need to take a break. My daughter and her boyfriend have the word blueberry as their safe word. When that word is uttered, both of them have made an agreement to stop, no matter where their conversation is, and revisit the subject matter at a later time. That gives each of them the time to think about what they were discussing or arguing about, decide whether it's really important, and to do some soul searching about their tone and their approach to the conversation. It's after this break and the same introspection that they can revisit the subject matter without the intensity and with a better understanding that the way they were communicating wasn't effective. When your emotions are so intense that you cannot hear the other person, no communication is actually happening. It's all just noise. It's like listening to a stereo that's so distorted that you can't make out the words. Taking a break is an effective way to improve your communication. Remember, emotions are not reactions, they're decisions. That may sound a little weird. But let me give you an example. If I were to cut you while you were awake, you would bleed. If I were to cut you while you're sleeping, you would bleed. That's a reaction. It's automatic. However, if I called you a derogatory name, 
while you were awake, you may get angry. However, if you were asleep and I called you the same derogatory name, you wouldn't have any emotion because you'd be asleep. Therefore, it's our thoughts about a certain statement and what we think about what someone said that leads to an emotional response. It all sounds very technical, but the bottom line is you can change how you think about something, then you can change your emotional state. We've all had this happen to us. Someone says something and we think it's an insult. We get upset, only later to find out it wasn't an insult and there was no reason for us to harbor any ill feeling towards the person. And more importantly, if we keep those feelings about the other person inside of us, then they won't even know that you thought they insulted you. Change your thoughts and you can change your emotion. Number three, treat your partner with respect. People have a lot of different ideas about what the word respect means. Sometimes it's used to mean admiration for someone important or who is someone who is inspirational to us. Other times, respect refers to deference towards a figure of authority, like a parent, relative, teacher, boss, or even a police officer. In this context, it is presumed that respect should be given to those who have a certain types of knowledge or power. In other times, respect means upholding the basic right that every person has to make their own choices and feel safe in their daily lives. Respect in a relationship is reflected on how you treat each other on a daily basis, even if you disagree or have an argument. And arguments do happen, even in healthy relationships. In fact, some even say it's healthy to argue, but not to fight. If you're able to respect and value each other's opinions and feelings by fighting fair, respect isn't about controlling someone or making them do what you want them to do. Respect is actually about the freedom to be yourself and to be loved for who you are. Let's look at what respect looks like in a healthy relationship. The first is, you need to be able to talk openly and honestly with each other. Listen to each other is important. Valuing each other's feelings and needs. And the big one, being able to compromise. Speaking kindly to and about each other, giving each other space. Supporting each other's interests, hobbies, and careers. Building up your partner. Let them know you feel like they're valuable. And a really big one here, honoring each other's boundaries, no matter what. Number four, working towards a solution and not just to win. When problem solving everyday issues becomes a tug of war over who's right and who's wrong, then settling even the smallest of disputes becomes a battle. A better alternative is what's called the win-win waltz says marriage expert Susan Heitler, author of The Power of Two. She also says they toss around information back and forth and then have an aha moment and then come up with solutions that work well for the both of them. You also free yourself from the emotional and physical side effects of nasty fighting, such as feeling like you've intimidated or dominated your partner, or that you've given in or given up on what you really want or what's important to you. You will also have fewer tense times together and actually improve your health. Couples who learn to constructively solve problems lead healthier lives and reduce their risk for stress-related health problems including depression, cardiovascular disease, and a lowered immune system. So how do you do this? Well, let's look at some concrete steps. Step one, describe the problem in a few words and let your partner respond. This is the opening round in problem solving and it involves you getting an overview of the issue out on the table so that both of you can understand what you're talking about. Don't let it smolder or expect your partner to guess. Step two, look together at deeper concerns. This is the exploration phase. Don't try to sell your point of view to your spouse or partner and don't try to solve the problem just yet do talk about the underlying worries and the issues that contribute to the problem that you're trying to solve. And most importantly, do listen carefully to your partner's concerns and keep an open mind. Step number three, craft a win-win strategy. Look for steps you can take to resolve the issue for both of you. This is crucial. 
Don't tell your partner what he or she can't do, but instead say what you can do. The best solutions usually aren't your first ideas at all, but they may occur to you after looking at your concerns and figuring out what matters most to each of you. And the fifth and final key for better communication is really important. Think before you speak so you won't say something you'll regret. There's a saying that a great insult lasts a long time. Don't do it. Thinking before speaking isn't rare. It's almost human nature to feel the need to contribute to a conversation. Sometimes you may feel emotional about a topic and may not think about it before you talk about it. Hence, it can be pretty hard to stop yourself from blurting out the first thing that pops into your head. There are a variety of reasons that can prevent you from thinking before speaking. So don't beat yourself up about it if it happens to you. That being said, you do need to remember that we are human and we are social beings and need to communicate effectively in our everyday lives. Communication is the key to happy and sordid relationships. Hence, it's important to inculcate the habit of being able to think before you speak with anyone. It is essential for your credibility because if what you communicate isn't credible or useful, people won't respect your words. That's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, for more videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for more interesting videos. I hope it really helps you to have better meaningful communication with your partner Thanks for watching and have a wonderful and blessed day.